Hi, this is Tim, and today I'm going to talk about what type of PLC you should start learning on. And if you're looking for the quick answer, I don't have it. Because if you go to talk to Alan Bradley, they're going to tell you to buy an Alan Bradley PLC. If you go talk to Omron, they're going to tell you to go buy an Omron PLC. If you go talk to Siemens, they're going to tell you to buy a Siemens PLC. But I'm going to say that your answer is going to depend mostly on your location. First things first, figure out what the manufacturers are actually using in your area. If you're in an area that is almost exclusively using Siemens, don't buy an Allen Bradley PLC. You know, our particular area is probably more Allen Bradley. So we do sell a lot of Allen Bradley. Most of our trainers go out with them, but they also go off Automation Direct, Siemens, Omron, Mitsubishi. We probably have built trainers for about everything on it. That is the first thing, is make sure you're getting something that is common to the area. Not that you can't cross over from one PLC to the other. Um, I can use probably about every PLC manufacturer's software, but if you are surrounded by Allen Bradley and you go and learn Siemens, it's gonna be a lot tougher for you to find those kind of entry-level jobs as opposed to if you, you know, learned Allen Bradley. Another important thing is I feel strongly that it should have free software. Um, most of your manufacturers do offer some limited free version of their software and those that don't and see this video, please go back to your sales force, your engineers, your management, whoever, and figure out how to offer a free version of your software for people starting out. The main reason is whether you buy one of our trainers or a PLC and you find out it is not a fit for you, it's not that difficult to offload that PLC. You can sell it on eBay, you can sell it to a friend, you know, there's lots of ways to get out of it. Software is much more difficult to sell to someone else. So you're gonna get stuck with that cost. And the next is beware of free. So for example, I have this Slick 503 that, um, I'm, well honestly, if somebody wants it, I'll probably give it to them. Oh, well, no, I use these to test UICs. But you can find people that will give you these. I mean, and it seems like an awesome deal. Hey, I just got a PLC for free and I'm ready to learn. Well, the software for the Slick is $2,000. So yes, you've got a free PLC and I, I get this inquiry all the time. It's like, I got this great setup. What I understand is when it was new, it cost $10,000 and I need the software for it. Well, okay, it did cost $10,000 when it's new, but today it's not worth squat and now you're gonna pay $2,000 to make a PLC work that isn't worth squat. So be cautious of what you get for free. And on the other side of that is don't go too far on the other end. So for example, uh, this is a Micrologix 1400. It is the big brother of this 1100 here. This 1100 uses the free version of RS Logic's MicroStarter Lite. This does not use the free version. Now, first of all, if you get one of these for free, go sell it on eBay and then buy this. All right, so we have choosing what's popular in your area. We have try to make sure it has free software. Uh, make sure that you know what you're getting for free isn't obsolete or doesn't require some outrageously costly software. And the next big thing is choose one. In other words, I see, especially I see this with schools a lot. Um, they'll be like, yeah, I've got this Allen Bradley set up here. I've got this Siemens set up here. I got this Mitsubishi set up here. Can you help me? build an Omron setup. What happens is the students just get shallow knowledge of each of those. They never really get a deep understanding of it. So choose one and you know I would say go back to rule number one. Choose the one that is the most popular in the area. You know this is a really difficult one especially for schools because you know they are you know they are on a budget so maybe because you got PLC A manufacturer over here that everyone's using and PLC B is like hey I want to get in this area so we're going to give you all these PLCs. I don't know I can't say for sure whether that's a good deal or not. All right so I hope this video has been helpful even though actually in the end I guess I really didn't tell you anything. Uh, maybe I should run for politics. If you have particular questions about how to get started, what PLC should you use, should I invest money in this or that, uh, put your questions down in the comments. We're always available by email. Till next time. Hey, buddy. You also were talking to me on Zoom. Did hear you? Oh, that's because I was recording. Coffee days. Whiskey nuts. Look what this bone, oh, he's not over there. Look what this bone has <laughs> did.
So I'm broken in it. <laughs> yeah, he broke it in it. He's broken yeah. now. Broke Can we it. return him? I don't think so, but he better learn to program if he's going to be breaking his arm. I already know how to program. I know you know how to program. I know more than you. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.